Matt here with Team Flat Cat and the Quest for Monster Catfish. Mr. Cooper behind the camera right now. <laughs> and I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Video review. Uh, we're out here on a new Sea Arc RX-180 tunnel jet. It's a nice boat. Uh, not got a lot of time on the thing yet. This is actually our first day on the water fishing. This thing's awesome absolutely awesome we've got tons of room and i know there's uh wasn't a really a lot of videos i found about the sea arc uh the river extreme series which is what this one is so i was going to do a little bit of walk through and let you guys kind of check this thing out a little bit uh starting up you can see you've got a rather spacious casting deck especially if you're going to do a lot of multi-species something like musky something where you're going to be casting a lot plenty of room and there's actually also an optional 20 gallon bow fuel tank you can get which i didn't want because i wanted the cockpit space but you can have an even bigger deck extension if you go with that fuel tank because it'll extend it out some. Uh, of course, you can see obviously the trolling motor mount on here. Uh, you've got your uh, trolling motor plug, trim control up here, your nav light. You got a front compartment right here. Um, can't really see down in it. It's a smaller locker. It's made for like anchor lines, uh, stuff like that. You can cram some life jackets in it. Uh, it's a good place to put the foot control for the Tarova. You've got another compartment back here, more of a sort of dry storage. Uh, this one, at least for me, makes a great tackle compartment. Plenty of room to put tackle and stuff in it. Now, here under the seats, this actually flips up. You've got a ton more storage in here. Uh, life jackets uh, is actually what about the best thing I found to put under here, throw nets things like that or you can, of course you can mix and match up it's your boat whatever but um, 100,000 tall all welded uh, these things have a lifetime hull warranty which is really excellent on this like I say this is the 180 18 foot 60 inch wide bottom uh, this one I've got it powered by a Yamaha 9065 jet which so far I'm liking the thing's got a lot of torque great motor and I'll kind of show you guys uh, the jet pump and everything from the outside in the tunnel hole here in a little bit okay so we've got the boat out of the water right now I'll try to do a little bit more in-depth and kind of show you some of the other features on it a little bit better details than we were on the water um, again moving up here to the front let you get a little bit closer look at the storage compartments I mentioned we've got this locker up here uh, I use it like say for anchor ropes uh, foot pedal for the Trova it's a really shallow compartment can't fit an anchor or anything in there, but you can fit all your lines. Uh, you cram some life jackets and stuff in there. Uh, like I say, of course, here you've got your um, nav light, trim switch, troll motor plug, and all that. You can see the troll motor plate right here. Uh, moving to this next compartment, you can get a little better view of this, uh, this compartment right here. That's my tackle storage compartment. Uh, you've kind of got uh, dry storage for this one. Um, like I say, it's got some decent room in it for uh, quite a few different things. Back here, like I say, you've got your seat. Underneath that is the live well. Um, use it for a bait well. It would be enough to put some smaller catfish in. And, of course, this is the center console model of the tunnel jet. Uh, of course, here's your Yamaha control. Um, you can see there's your ignition kill switch. You've got a 12 volt plug, nice for phone charger and all that. And of course your master power, anchor light, aeration, and the bilge pump. Uh, like I say, I've got this one set up with my Lowrance HDS7 touchscreen. Uh, nice grab bar on it, windshield to deflect some of the rain off you running down the lake. Uh, you see you got a nice diamond tread floor in it. This is 125 thousandths thick, uh, really good and sturdy, and it's got the gator hide coating on it. So you get done fishing, if you got a pressure washer or something, hose the thing down, no problems there. Now moving back here, this is actually removable too. This is storage underneath the seats. As you can see, you've got a spacious area down here, which I have full of life jackets, safety stuff, throw net. Um, if you carry a lot of tackle, you've got plenty of room for tackle. Or again, if you just want cockpit space and want this out of the way, then you can simply unbolt the thing and remove it and roll without a seat here which I like to stand and drive anyway, but I also like the space. Um, here on the back deck, again, you've got a really large, spacious deck for casting. 
Um, here you can see how I've got, I get a bunch of people asking about the custom rod bar. Um, this is how I've got it mounted in this particular boat. Um, you see I've just got the hitch pin run through here and it's bolted down to the floor. Um, it's, it's pretty sturdy. It'll actually flex the floor before anything else tries to move. Um, back here, this actually lifts up. And as you can see, you've got your fuel tank. If you don't have the optional bow tank, which I wanted the 10 gallon tank back here because I wanted the cockpit space up front. Starting battery, room for the uh, two trolling batteries over there. Although if you do go with a, oops, stay there. If you do go with a 24 volt system though, you may have to do like I did. I had to actually notch this out to clear this outside battery. They've kind of got it sized just to fit a single battery. Or if you don't have a charger, which I, I'm not sure why you wouldn't. You could probably put another one there, but I've got my Minn Kota charger right there. Best feature of this, Yamaha. Big, huge Yamaha jet. This is the F90. 90 power head, 65 at the jet pump. And as you can see, this one uses a large pump. Uh, after you go up above the 6040, then that's when you get this large pump, and it pushes a lot of water. This motor's got a lot of torque, a lot of bottom end to it. Like I say, this is RX-180JT jet tunnel. Of course, you can see the tunnel right here, which is a topic of debate. Uh, I know some people are against the tunnel because you actually lose surface area and water dispersal when you go to the tunnel. What I mean is a typical hull, you've got your flat surface right here. You've got this area in the center, say right here's your motor. This center area is all di also displacing water, allowing the boat to float more shallow. However, when you add the tunnel, You've got this right here, you lose this surface area because it's now setting up here. So sometimes you may not tend to draft quite as shallow if you do have the tunnel just due to the water displacement. However, I would honestly rather have to worry about doing a hole repair if I hit knock a hole in it versus having to replace a jet pump. So in my case, I like having the tunnel here. Um, so you can see the drain plugs and stuff. You've got one on each side of the tunnel for it. Uh, right here's the transducer plate. I've got the structure scan, the regular 2D. And of course, over here is your screen for the intake for the live well. Uh, here you can get a little bit of view of the trailer. Um, I'm not sure who manufactures the trailers for Sea Arc or if they actually manufacture their own trailers, but it's a good solid tubular design. Um, down there's for the uh, spare tire, which I have. I've just got to go pick up the uh, hardware to mount it and pick up the uh, safety chain from the dealer uh, this coming week but um, I mean not a lot to say it's a boat trailer but it's a nice sturdy trailer decent sized tires on it got the boat buckles on it which is definitely really handy um, so far performance wise I really can't complain about this I I'm pretty happy with it um, uh, two people in it. It's running around uh, about 30, 31 mile per hour. Um, as you can see, you've got the water line right here. So with two people in the back, which bear in mind, most of this scum line is from me and Mark sitting back in the very back with 10 gallons of fuel, three batteries. So it will draft a little bit more than I'd like due to the balance of the load. Um, I may consider float pods for this boat in the future. Um, not sure yet I'm gonna to try to kind of fish it through the winter and see if I see any other modifications I want to do to it um, I am gonna add a spray plate I do get a decent bit of water spray uh, especially over here on the port side I noticed that I mean not enough that any's going in the boat but if you're sitting back there you might get sprayed a little bit uh, so that's in the future um, not really much else to add to it um, unfortunately this one does not have the gunnel track system so I've had to mount the rod holders in like that, which um, as you can see the base of the rod holder, it's actually square versus a slightly rounded gunnel. Uh, so to remedy that and prevent them from rocking and wearing out, uh, I'm actually going to have those TIG welded on next week and get that taken care of. Um, another thing on this side of the console, you can see you've got a nice little, uh, little courtesy light there if you need it. And of course here you can see the capacity plate for it. It's rated for five persons, rated up for a 90 horse motor.